Hello and welcome to another Proteus tutorial. Today we're going to go over some quick lighting hints and just explain how it works. So you'll notice that we have our rooms from earlier and we have a sun over here which if I open the inspector is just a light with directional clicked, use shadows checked, and is sun checked. And when you notice that when I rotate this around, I'm going to set this to global transform so I can easily rotate it around in a circle. You can see that it casts shadows inside my building, even though we have a ceiling and walls. So one of the ways that we fix this is by adding a shadow material uh, to the exterior here. I'm going to go ahead and drop a box down. I'm going to rescale it here in a second. We're just going to drop down a quick box. I'm going to face mode. I'm going to go to my move tool and I'm just going to edit this so that it's outside here. Um, you can make it as big as you want, I guess. There's no real limit. I just keep it pretty close to what I'm working on. Um, so now I'm going to go to my material browse. I'm going to go to the default uh, section here. You'll see shadow. Double click on it. Put it in your little shopping cart. Select it. Apply. Now um, you'll notice that everything's dark on the inside uh, and the uh, shadows or the lighting from the sun does not cast on the inside anymore. Now if I were to hide this, you'll see it cast again and then I'm going to unhide it and you can see that the sun no longer comes in here. Uh, one of the other things that you'll notice is that this room is darker than this room. This room has sort of like a flat gray to it, uh, while the other room sort of shows more realistic values. And what I want to explain is the uh, the reason for that is we have what we call cube maps. Now this is an engine type thing, so this is a Unity engine um, cube map and it is used to reference lighting and create bounce lighting or use more realistic um, uh, catches here in the room so what I want to do is I'm gonna I'm gonna extend this volume out a little bit more so we don't get these bright corners here and I guess um, before I do that I'm gonna show you how we create one of these I'm gonna go ahead and delete this one you can go to your asset browser functions right here and then find MV probe and you can drag you can drag and drop or uh, you can draw one up here in the menu there's a little circle here you can just drag and then bring that up here and that will also do it um, default I think you want to give each of your rooms a buffer here so don't just put it directly against the wall you're gonna see those results that we were just talking about instead um, I guess one of the best ways to show this is live. So I'm going to unhide this. You can see that this current cube map only really covers the center of the room. But if I select it and I start stretching the arms out here, it starts to encompass more. And that's what we want. We want to add some extra buffering here. But we want it to be relatively close to the center of the room as well. That was my Discord. Pay no attention to that. Unless that was your Discord, you should also check that. Maybe somebody's messaging you. So, uh, let's go ahead and... There we go. Now it's pretty dark in here, right? So let's go ahead and add a light. I'm going to go back to my um, functions and just find the light bulb in here. And just drag and drop. It's also... Um, can, or, can, no, it's caps F will drop in a light as well, but since we're just doing non-hotkeys on these tutorials, that's the way you would do it, just drag and drop. So we've got our light, I'm just going to put it here in the center. Looks pretty good, I like it, creates a nice little dark atmosphere in here. Um, but let's go ahead and add a material for this front door, so object mode, select, face, select, materials and I believe it's in sci-fi lights on 01 underscore gen put that in the shopping cart select it hit apply creates a nice little fill here over our doorway that we created earlier I'm gonna just move this guy into position and uh, yeah that's looking pretty good to me another little thing that I like to do and this is you know more medium to advanced, but I figured I'd just show this real quick. 
So if I double click on his properties, you can see he's got a pretty small range. He doesn't use shadows. Um, and even if he did, you really wouldn't notice anything. There's like a little lip right here. So to save and optimize, I would say don't use shadows unless it's for a special moment or something that you really want to showcase some cool shadows. Um, and then, yeah, a little, sm little spotlight, low intensity, five range. And then I'm going to duplicate him. So control D will duplicate him. And I'm going to change it into a spotlight now. I'm going to rotate him so he's facing this way. Maybe put down a little bit angle, like right about, right about here. And I'm going to change the spotlight angle to 90. And maybe give it a 15 range so that it reaches the end of the room here. It's quite nice. Place him right about there. Now we're talking. This is looking pretty good already. We've got some really nice shadows going on here. Nice little cone. And this little fill light here really adds that like hot spot up here. So it's a nice little technique and gets some really good results. Now you can see this room is still light gray. It's because it doesn't have a cube map. I'm just going to quickly copy paste this, duplicate, drag that over. And now we fill this room out. One of the things that I would like to mention real quick, and this touches base on best practices, is you can see how this light over here bleeds into this room. There's a few things you can do. One, you can move this so that it's farther away from the wall, which would be less noticeable. Um, the last thing you would ever want to do is check use shadows. And while that works, it's also very expensive for uh, point lights. Um, not as bad for spotlights because spotlights only use one draw call in terms of rendering. Uh, but point lights use six draw calls and they also check everything inside of their sphere. So this cone, uh, this wall, this cube over here, these walls will all get checked except for this stuff back here isn't going to get checked because it's not inside the yellow cone. Now that might sound like garbly gook to some of you, but some of you will understand. And I think going forward, just to be aware of not using shadows, um, all over the place just don't do it <laughs> uh, so th one thing that you could do and this room kind of has a door over it as well we could just copy and paste this over here and then marry this over um, and that's fine and it works um, but generally speaking you kind of want to have a little bit of room between each of your rooms so pushing this back another meter or so um, would be useful and also just kind of give uh, what we call the auto map, um, which you would, if you might um, have used the map function in game, it kind of has like a top down feature. So you can see the layout that you've been running through. So just giving these rooms um, a little bit more buffer space, like just about here would be really good and would help um, your lighting situation if you have something like that. So one of the last things that we're going to cover in this uh, tutorial, I guess I can go over really quickly just um, some of the neat things you can do with the color palette and also the um, lights. So I'm going to hide that again, give this a little bit more room and adjust my doors around now that I've really messed up my map. <laughs> So let's say we want these lights to be yellow instead, okay? But we want it to match the, the material here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up my color palette and I'm also gonna double click on my light, bring the inspector over here and you can see apply palette color. So I'm gonna select yellow here and I'm gonna apply the palette color and I'm gonna do it again to our cone light. And then I'm gonna select this object, face, and then apply color, or no, sorry, emissive apply a missive and now you can see this is all yellow and if I were to later on say you know what I don't really like that color yellow I could do the same thing as we've done before I'm just gonna swap it for blue quite nice so we're gonna undo some of this <laughs> and get this back to um, let's see I'll just make it white for now Cool. So the next thing that I'll do is add a skylight uh, in the top over here. And one of the ways that I'll do that, I'm just going to isolate this face. Um, I guess I could do it to this room. So um, object mode, face mode. And then we're going to detach new. 
and that's going to separate it from everything else. I'm going to select these edges, use connect, and just kind of drag this over here. One, two. Um, previously in the last tutorial we locked these faces and you can see that it's causing some stretching now. So we'll, we'll fix that in just a second. Um, go back to face mode and then just put them back into world. And we'll fix these uh, tiles as well. Select faces. Use the quotation key on the English keyboard. And then we can just adjust these now. And the faces won't move, or the material won't move. Connect. Connect. And I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to extrude this. So use extrude connected as a button. And I'm just going to bring this up a little bit. Maybe, I don't know, we'll do a full meter for now. And I'm going to remove that. And now we've got a cool little skylight, but the sun's not coming in. Um, you can see it does go through the shadow texture here. And that gives us some sunlight. So what we'll do is, I'm going to bring this up just a little bit more. And one of the ways that we can, um, I guess there's a few ways, but the non-advanced way, really, uh, I guess if you only have one of these, is just to kind of grab these edges here and just kind of make, make a new um, face outside here. I'm going to separate this, extrude the edges here. And just gonna make a little hole around our window here. And we'll weld those points. And now we're going to object mode, and I'm going to my material browser, shadow material down here at the bottom, hit apply material. And now you can see we're getting some nice sun in here in inside this room. Okay, gonna hit save play. See, now everything's quite nice. Player comes over here, gets lighting on their gun correctly. It's very good. And I guess I should fix this. So what we'll do is we're going to select these edges, extrude again, bring it down. And I guess um, we can do that for everything here. I'm just going to deselect these. And just bring this down. And that will solve that. Very good. Cool. Well, that is a basic in lighting. Hope you guys appreciate it. And I'll see you on the next video.